Hello and welcome to UPL Insights, a new digital media series from UPL led by our teams changing the game for farmers across the African continent. This series will bring together leaders in sustainable farming, food systems and climate resilience to explore the challenges and developments defining world agriculture today. We are recording this episode ahead of the African Green Revolution Forum, the biggest agriculture event for Africa, which is now marking 20 years of AGRA's mission to transform agriculture. This year, the AGRF Summit is a virtual event, and we have been talking to some of the people leading that transformation inside and outside of UPL, and exploring our shared commitment to resilience, trade, nourishment, and sustainable productivity. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Adrian Percy, Chief Technology Officer at UPL, who has been at the forefront of agriculture, innovation and technology for more than 25 years. Adrian's work has explored and promoted the development and adoption of new agriculture and food technologies that support global food security while conserving the environment. In this episode, we will be looking at the changing character of research and development in agriculture and the different roles that technology is playing for farmers in the developing world. When we think about technology and agriculture, it's easy to, mix, to mistake scale for significance. A fleet of driverless combined harvesters or fields of crop picking robots sound impressive, but have little relevance for the 500 million small farmers who currently supply 80% of the world's food. So, what does innovation look like at the other end of the spectrum and how can technology address resilience, productivity and sustainability in the developing world? Adrian Percy is one of the people who has devoted a career to answering these questions through a range of established and startup agribusinesses, value chains and research. Since joining UPL, Adrian has formalized a new approach to technology through our first Agritech Accelerator the Open Ag Center, and Adrian believes that this collaborative approach can bring about a new wave of farmer-centric innovation. Adrian, thank you so much for joining us on UPN Insights. To uh, <laughs> yes, no, thank you so much, Florent. It's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, greetings from where I'm sitting, which is in North Carolina in the USA but uh, absolutely delighted to have this conversation on such an important topic. Thank you so much. So to start with, um, I want to give you, uh, uh, I want to ask you, sorry, uh, to give us a, a brief overview of uh, what is AgTech? What are we talking about? It seems like it means different things to different people. Can you uh, tell us in a nutshell? Yeah, well, I will try to, but it is a vast topic as you've just alluded to. Um, if we go back just um, six or seven years ago, in fact, you know, the whole subject of ag tech was basically not being spoken about. Um, but in the last few years, I think uh, a, a number of technology and scientific advancements has really allowed the build up of a complete ecosystem of new agricultural technologies. And this is being funded and driven by, you know, investment from venture capital, uh, firms from private equity firms and also from you know many of the businesses active in the uh, agri food chain. Uh, it is very vast. I mean, it really covers all types of agricultural technologies, you know, right from upstream um, inventions and ideas which aid you know farmers in the field with new inputs, new types of crops, uh, the move to biological based systems right through to actually consumer facing uh, products. So, you know, it, it is a vast, um, it is a vast area. I think what's really interesting though, is this, you know, sector is now, um, you know, five or six years old. Um, there are literally thousands of startup companies operating in this space, many, many different types of technologies, which I think will be really transformational for many growers around the world and will really help us move, you know, into a new age of agriculture uh, with new technology and help us, you know, really try to address some of these uh, really tough topics that we have around food insecurity and protection of our environment. That, sound, that sounds very impressive uh, indeed. And um, so I, I, 
I want to uh, keep our feet on the ground because uh, I think to, to a lot of people, many of these ideas will, will feel like a bit like science fiction. And the reality <laughs> actually is that ag tech is going to influence not only farmers' lives, but also have tangible effects on our day-to-day -day lives, uh, improvements in environment protection, health, nutrition, and so on. Can you give us maybe just a few examples of uh, how ag tech is already changing uh, our lives, uh, the food and farming farming systems? Absolutely. I mean, you know, like I think in many different areas of our everyday lives, digitalization of different industries have have really affected how we live. You know, the ability to order a taxi through a um, through an app or access a movie very easily on TV. All of these, you know, things have, have changed the way we live. Um, and agriculture is no di different. And these digital technologies are, are really driving a new generation of approaches in, in agriculture. Um, this, this, really, this really covers not just you know, agriculture in you know, farms of larger sizes, but also in smallholder farmers, because many of these technologies actually um, are going to be um, you know, quite simple and quite affordable, hopefully, uh, for growers of um, different types of farms across the world. But to give you a couple of examples, I mean, you know, as I said, digitalization is really, you know, driving a lot of this, the ability to collect large quantities of data, to integrate it, the data to make sense of them, to make decisions from them. So, you know, we're seeing, um, you know, new applications of, um, you know, crop protection materials as an example. So, you know, drone spraying of, um, of fields to to protect against insects and diseases is one very obvious thing that has already been deployed, you know, in many parts of the world to a really considerable degree. But it goes a little bit further than just using a drone to spray a crop. You know, that drone can also be used or a sister drone can also be used to actually detect, you know, the arrival of an insect in a field, perhaps the first insect to go into that field or the very early emergence of a disease. Once you know that these problems are arising, um, you know, these drones can actually work together to actually then start to, you know, rectify some of these problems and start to spray, for instance, preventatively uh, to control the disease on the, or the insect. So that's one very, very obvious way of, of, of ag tech impacting farmers in a, in a very tangible manner. Uh, another one is with weather apps and understanding, you know, weather patterns, um, you know, knowing when to plant, uh, what to plant, when to irrigate, how much to irrigate, you know, these types of um, technologies which often are um, coupled with sensors on the ground, which can detect, for instance, moisture levels in the soil, can be tremendously important when you're trying to conserve water um, and other, other, other elements and other resources. So that's just a couple of examples of how, you know, ag tech is changing the way farmers uh, work uh, across the world, but also, you know, having a very important um, impact on how we use our resources, uh, especially around uh, topics such as nutrition, uh, water, and the use of crop protection inputs. Right, excellent. Yeah, so, so th these are very, very uh, tangible uh, examples, and we see that through precision agriculture, as you, as you cited it, uh, we are not only helping the farmers do a, a better job and, and be more efficient, but also improving the general uh, quality of, uh, of the air, of the environment, of uh, health of the communities and, and food quality in the end. So uh, this, this is very, uh, very good example. Yeah, um, and if I, if I could add, Florent, I think a lot of, yeah. you know, society in general wants to have an impact on how agriculture is performed and done. So, you right. know, it's, you know, we all know that farmers, you know, care about their land and are looking to, you know, improve the quality of their land wherever they can and oftentimes looking to, you know, ultimately pass that land on to the next generation. But also, you know, consumers want to know that farmers are, um, you know, operating in a very responsible manner, that the environment exactly. is being protected. And this, of course, is also driving regulators to take, you know, decisions on which technologies can be used and when they should be used. So all of us, I think, uh, have a kind of uh, impact and an interest in how our food is produced. And, and ag tech, I think, is going to help, 
you know, that in a lot of ways, you know, with things such as transparency, you know, understanding how food, you know, has been produced, what kind of crop inputs were used, how much water was used on that particular crop. That's going to be important for, you know, exports of fruit and vegetables, you know, to global markets. And so it's going to be important that farmers can show, you know, how they produce their crop and perhaps get it certified so that, um, you know, open uh, export markets are there for them. Yeah, thank you for, for raising that. I was just about to say that uh, we are living through a, a period of great change uh, for the food systems and we, we can feel it at all levels, uh, making sense of pressing challenges like climate change and now uh, COVID-19, uh, making our environment a little bit more hostile every day. So. Uh, we don't have time to waste in finding new ideas and solutions, but um, the best ones are often slowed down by uh, the burden of regulatory and, and administrative uh, obligations. Uh, Adrian, you have been on a mission to catalyze innovations uh, in AgTech with the Open Ag Center. Can you tell us what's the vision and what's the purpose of this Open Ag Center? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it comes from a, a belief um, that the the agri-food system is so complex um, and it is so important that there's no one approach or no one company that can solve you know all the problems and all the issues that growers face you know in front of them um, every day and you've just mentioned you know climate change and covid i mean climate change obviously has been having an impact for a number of years now um, and covid is a much more um you know, immediate impact, but both of them have had an absolutely a pr profound effect on how our food is produced and have shocked, you know, our, our distribution systems of our food and will continue to do that, I'm sure, especially in the case of climate change. So, you know, we need um, solutions to many pain points that growers face, you know, in their farming practices in many different parts of the world, of course, including Africa. And the um, Open Ag Center is really designed to help, you know, be one answer to some of those problems. So what we're looking to do is actually be uh, a collaborator, um, to be a partner, a good partner with some of these ag tech firms that we mentioned earlier. Uh, there are literally thousands of them out there. Some of them are, are nothing more than one or two people, maybe working out of a university lab, you know, up to uh, companies which are fairly large and sophisticated in how they operate. All of them are looking to bring new technology, you know, onto the marketplace, and we believe that we can we can help them do that. Uh, so we built a new laboratory facility here in North Carolina. Um, it is populated by experts across a number of scientific disciplines, including entomologists, plant pathologists, weed scientists, um, computational biologists, and all of them are looking and scouting for new technologies that may you know, solve some of these farmer pain points. Uh, and when we find them, we want to work with the entrepreneurs and innovators who are um, inventing these technologies to help them, you know, get things through to the market. I mean, one of the things that UPL has, which, um, you know, we're very blessed to have is a, a very strong development platform. We have um, research farms across the world um, that are regularly testing out um, our products. Um, they, they have the capacity to really understand the technology, technology clear strengths of these products, but also sometimes the weaknesses and make sure that we can position them properly for farmers. Uh, these research farms, including, you know, one in Ivory Coast, work in a network so we can actually leverage the data that we're producing across the globe to actually, you know, best understand these products as we develop them. So that's something that most of these smaller companies do not have access to, and we can provide that. Um, the other platform that we have, which I think is is fundamental, is a regulatory one. So we have regulatory people across the world. Uh, UPL operates in 138 different countries, and we have, you know, regulatory people that cover all of those countries. And uh, we have experience in bringing new technology to the marketplace. So not just more traditional chemical type products, but new new biological products, for for an example. And again, you know, we're looking to work with entrepreneurs, provide them with that platform and our insights into the market um, in order to accelerate um, getting their technology onto, you know, into into the into farms across the world. 
Excellent. Yeah. So we, we actually uh, understand that uh, innovation uh, initially comes from the field, uh, then uh, goes to the lab, and and, and ultimately is sent back uh, to the farmers for their for their benefit. So um, is that is that the right uh, process? And it, and it does sometimes work like that. Um, you know, we, sometimes we are working with um, you know new biochemical or new biotech tech approaches in agriculture you know, new types of microbes that may be able to, you know, facilitate nutrient use for um, um, nutrient use efficiency or um, water, you know, water use efficiency or perhaps stress tolerance in the terms of heat or, or salinity. And some of these have been tested, um, you know, on the farm, as you say, others have not, but they're based on a, you know, a scientific hypothesis that there is a belief that they will work. And of course, what we're going to do is take from a very practical standpoint, you know, do some discrete validation experiments to really check they work um, and then and then send them out to the field so that we can actually test them in the right conditions, because that is one of the, you know, the real challenges to make sure that, you know, when you do develop a new technology, you've really understood it under, you know, the conditions that are relevant, you know, in the country or in the region that you're trying to actually you know, deploy the technology, and uh, and we feel that we have the network and the approach to really do that well. That's great, and um, yeah, we we also understand that uh, this new open ag center, the the whole approach and and, and the vision, is to fast track uh, actually the access to uh, innovation for uh, smallholder farmers. So. Uh, if we uh, look a little bit our um, African context, because uh, we are recording, uh, of course, this podcast for uh, for an African audience, um, looking to the context of uh, farmers in Africa, can you uh, give us some examples of the technology that uh, are going to make a, a big different, a big difference? Sorry, in this uh, environment. Yeah. So I mean, first, first to say, you know, we we've, we've built the lab. Um, that we're operating out of in North Carolina, but that's, it's no, never been the intention just to serve farmers, you know, in North Carolina or here in the US. I mean, really, sure. um, we, the reason we've, we're operating here is that we have access to some really top um, quality expertise. Um, and, and so these scientists are really evaluating, you know, the potential of these technologies to, you know, to be used in, in virtually any part of the world. Uh, and also to be used on farm, you know, farms which are big and, and small. So, so that's the first thing to really kind of emphasize. But, you know, we are looking, I mean, at a high level, what we are tending to see and, and be very interested in is, you know, any product that can help with farmer resilience or with sustainable agriculture, which is a big focus of, of UPL. So we're seeing a lot of biological based products um, you know, there are there are probably a thousand or, or at least uh, many hundreds of uh, microbiome based co companies out there right now. So it's really important to really kind of uncover which of those pro those particular companies and which technologies, you know, are really valuable and useful and differentiated in the field. So we're we're testing an awful lot of uh, microbes, but also looking at other forms of biologicals. So these may be, for instance, proteins or peptides which are very interesting because um, they have the capacity to be very selective, as you would hope with a biological. So, you know, re reducing ef unwanted effects on the environment, such as uh, non-target species. But also some of them seem to have, you know, similar efficacy to chemicals. And that is really incredible. If you can, if you can uncover a biological with something even approaching uh, the basic efficacy of a, of a chemical, that's going to be fabulous. So, um, you know, these types of products are very selective for, you know, specific insect species as an example. So, um, you know, one product that UPL is very interested in, we work on, is Phalogen. Um, this is uh, a baculovirus uh, targeting the form army worm. And this is actually something, you know, that's already, um, you know, will be distributed in Western and Southern Africa. So that's a very concrete example that's something that's gone right through um, the development um, organization with with an external partner and the open ag center is going to be looking for follow-up products you know so we're looking at what can we do in terms of for instance locust control obviously a, a massive problem across the world uh, this year 
tends to you know come in in uh, in in bouts and fits but you know we want to be ready you know with the next generation products for the next you know time that that locust uh, swarms are are becoming a, a problem for for africa and asia so you know this is another you know obvious area that we're going to work on um, but we're working on other types of um um you know disease prevention technologies um, um insect um and and also things you know that kind of can can add benefits from a sustainable agriculture perspective so another product that um, upl is working on very heavily in places like Ivory Coast is called Zeba, which is an ultra absorbent starch based uh, product, which actually, you know, can absorb qu quantities of water that reduce the need for continual irrigation that can provide a, con you know, a continual water source um, to to plants such as coffee and um, and, and, and cocoa, uh, veggies, sugarcane. You know that's going to be very important as we move forward to not just be looking at how can we control you know weeds insects and diseases but also can we you know support the growth of the crop in different ways um you know through stimulants and, and other products very very interesting uh, examples and very exciting uh, i'm sure uh, this will be of great interest for uh, our african audience adrian Thank you so much for uh, taking us on this journey of the future of agriculture and uh, revealing some of the innovations on which uh, UPL is working in that domain. To find out more about UPL work, you can click the link in the description of this video and you can also subscribe to this channel to follow the full UPL Insight series for the AGRF. Thank you.